Thank you for joining our session on middle and high school level discus resources for building engaging lessons and assignments. Whether you are a middle school or high school teacher or librarian, you are going to be able to walk away with some great tips and resources to use and apply right away. We're going to be covering several uh, databases, several different aspects of these resources that you see on the screen now, from Teen Book Cloud all the way through Smart Search. Uh, you're going to be able to locate videos, printable handouts, worksheets, um, various uh, books, ebooks, journal articles, magazines that you would be able to incorporate in your lessons and to encourage your students to use in fulfilling their assignments. So we're going to do this in a systematic way and this is the step-by-step -step format we're going to use for the various content areas such as English language arts, social studies, science, geography, and math. So you can see here, um, you, we're first going to locate a book in Team Book Cloud, which is one of our newest databases. And then we're going to kind of work our way into building uh, and compiling information for background information, reference sources, video, audio images there you see. We're also going to take a look at searching Smart Search, which will allow you and your students to search more than one of the DISCUS databases at a time. And then we'll continue to look at other themes and concepts. So choose a topic you're teaching soon or around which you're building a unit or lesson and keep this in mind as you learn about each resource today. You're certainly welcome to pause this video at any time and uh, go out to www.scdiscus.org and you can do some searching on your topics even as you view this video. If you need the DISCUS login, you can contact your school's librarian or media specialist for the DISCUS login or use your school email account to send a request to the DISCUS office at discusoffice at statelibrary.sc.gov. Many of our databases, are, you will have seamless access and will not need the DISCUS login, but if you see this screen on the right where it's saying that it, you're required to have the DISCUS username and password, that's when you will need it. It's often needed when you're using remote devices uh, such as iPads, smartphones, etc. You are welcome to share this login with students, teachers, and parents in South Carolina via print, email, posting to a closed Google Classroom or a closed learning management system. Just please do not post the login credentials to websites, social media, listservs, newsletters, or documents that will be posted to the open web. These are restricted to use in South Carolina, and this will help us to preserve our licensing agreements with our vendors. So let's go ahead and get started and go live. So in going out to www.scdiscus.org, you can actually click it directly or it's actually best if you go through your school's website um, to utilize this. It should be linked from your school library. Notice you have several tabs across the top here. You have an A to Z list which you can easily click on and locate uh, by letter here the databases. You also have a grade level tab. So if you're wanting to just get familiar with those resources that are related to your school level, uh, you're welcome to do that. This is also very helpful if you are showing this to your students in class virtually or face-to-face, -face, uh, just to kind of show them which resources apply to the types of assignments and work they'll be doing at their level. We'll also look at Smart Search today, which you see here on the third from the right on this tab. This is going to be an interface that will search several of the databases at once. And then if you're interested in fur further training with us, you are welcome to go out to the uh, training calendar to join our live webinars. You're also welcome to view additional resources on our online archive page which I'll show you here, 
We have discus for middle school, high school students here. We also have additional, more specific instruction on high school English, high school science ebooks and research starters, locating maps in discus. So you'll have a lot of resources here as you continue to build your knowledge of using the discus platform. I also want to mention that we've just added tutor.com so that your students have expert tutor access uh, virtually in real time Sunday through Saturday from 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. And if you want to know more about that, you're welcome to view those videos there. We will also be offering an additional option in um, its tutoring time video. The other piece I want to point out to you as teachers, curriculum coordinators, librarians from your schools is the training tab also has training resources that can help you get familiar and even review what you learned today. So the subject and topical guides on middle school quick guide and high school here are found in a PDF format. You're welcome to print these and distribute these to your students, your teachers uh, and other staff throughout the school, even to parents if you have a parent teacher day. The nice thing about these is they actually break them out by grade level in alphabetical order so that the users will be able to see the contents, the different types of formats of materials, the videos, the articles, and you'll see special features that are located here along the right as well. These can be very handy for you to use when you're giving an assignment to a student so that they'll be able to easily uh, discern which databases would be best for their assignments. Anytime you want to distribute this, just jump on here and make sure that you check out the latest revision date so that you have the most recent up-to-date information. Again, that's also available for your high school and your elementary uh, level students. So we're going to utilize today, uh, we're just going to utilize the A to Z list because it's very easy to sort of jump in and out there. We're going to go first to Teen Book Cloud. This has been added specifically for our middle and high school students and those who are in public libraries as well. Uh, within Teen Book Cloud, you're going to find fiction books, nonfiction, drama and poetry, enhanced ebooks, which are ebooks that have professional narrations that are, are read aloud as the student reads the book. There are graphic novels, videos, and a whole collection of AP English ebooks as well. And there are several audio books that you'll see there on the right. You can either click on any of these categories at the top to start. Some of our nonfiction also includes some history and social studies topics. You'll also find some science related videos in the videos section. So if we want to search this, we can actually browse the top or we can browse through the carousels that are broken out here by graphic novel, enhanced ebooks, fiction, etc. The arrow will allow you to view the entire uh, carousel there. These are the videos. So if you're teaching on solar system, as you see here, uh, or on any of these topics about ecosystems, etc., there's some good videos for you as well. So that's sort of how you browse the collection. You can also do a direct search on the top right hand corner, and you can also um, view the view the index and that's what we'll show you in uh, just a moment as a teacher or a school specialist the index is very handy because if you uh, want to just browse the titles in alphabetical order you're able to do that if you know a title that you want you can actually go to that specific letter for the title to see that see if it is there. For instance, I click on the letter P. If I'm looking for uh, Pride and Prejudice, I can easily uh, find that here. Uh, the reason this index is very valuable to you at the school is uh, especially to educators. Let me see if I can scroll a little faster to the top. Is because you're able to actually link to the books. Uh, 
Uh, so you can have your one student read the book or an entire class if you want to add this to an assignment. This is true for the videos, the books, and the graphic novels also here. So we're going to demonstrate that in just one moment, but again, that's uh, going to the index to locate materials. We're going to go up to search in the top right hand corner, and I'm going to search by author. Notice you can also search by keyword, by title, uh, by lexile level, but if we want to search by author here, uh, we can search on George Orwell and go. And if we're going to be teaching a section on Animal Farm, for instance, we're going to use that as our example as we gather this first collection of lesson resources. But as you all know, um, George Orwell's books also lend themselves to some really good social studies topics and um, even science related uh, topics. So we're going to go down to the Animal Farm section here. You'll see there's an Animal Farm ebook here. There's one that is posted to uh, advanced placement there. There's one that's an audio book. And you also have that option for an enhanced ebook. And I'm going to show you what you can do with this book. So many of the books have a reader's guide and or lesson plans. These actually go out to additional websites to, to show you these. Um, but that's something that you want to keep in mind because if you are trying to build a lesson plan around a book, this is a great, great place to look for those. So if you click read online here, it's going to open the book. Notice the highlighting here. This is the enhanced ebook. So this is one that is going to be narrated and you can see the play button there on the far left at the bottom. The student can either choose to read the book and turn the pages on their own. They can also change the text size if they need maybe a little bit larger font to read it more comfortably. They can also use the back button here on the left to, uh, to go to page back. Or if they choose to actually listen to it read as they're reading the, the text themselves, they can click on the play and you will be able to hear that. Dr. Jones of the Manor Farm had locked the hen houses for the night. Chapter 1. Still drunk to remember to shut the pot. Mr. Jones of the Manor Farm had locked the hen houses for the night. But so was the too student drunk can to remember also to pause the that if they With the get ring to a particular light from his section lantern, and want to stop and from read or take notes, um, there they can do that as well. So we're just going to pop back here and go back to our um, Teen Book Cloud section for you to be able to see if you wanted to link this book out to uh, uh, maybe an electronic assignment, you could do that by simply going to that index, clicking on the letter A for Animal Farm, if that's the one you want to link, finding the Animal Farm Enhanced eBook in the list here, and clicking on that book ID. And as soon as you do that, you're going to have the URL to be able to link that book to an assignment. So at this point, you could open up a Word document and you could say, read the first chapter of Animal Farm, um, and you can link the, the word Animal Farm to this URL. You could say, read the first chapter of Animal Farm and tell us about the characters, for instance. So that's uh, the way that you can actually utilize these and push these out to your users and your students. Um, and that should be um, very useful to you there. So in addition to just fiction books and novels, if you go into the graphic novels, you're also going to be able to see teen, middle school, uh, high school level graphic novels. So if you have students that just want to browse, you want to keep that literacy going, maybe over Thanksgiving or Christmas, you can show them that there's a lot of good, interesting, um, just uh, leisure reading as well in addition here for your student. There are also classics, um, middle, middle school and high school fiction and high-low short stories there. 
and there are some books in French. There are no books in Spanish uh, at this time in uh, Teen Book Cloud. You're also going to find the video collection that I mentioned to you. They're broken out by history, science, geography, civics there. And you'll also find the AP English books are all organized by their time period, the ancient works, the classics there, the 1500s to 1700s, 1800s. So each of those uh, segments are books that the students may browse or that you may assign. You'll also find uh, within the teen uh, book cloud that you can, you have different toggles that you can toggle back and forth. For instance, if you click on view all titles here on the right, um, you can actually sort these. So if you want to be able to sort them by author or sort them by reading level, um, you can do that as well. So that's one more way uh, to be able to utilize and locate your books here. So after we've found the ebook on Animal Farm and perhaps created an assignment for that, we can then go back to our Discus platform here and be able to move to our next step. And we were going to look for uh, background information in one of our literature databases. So we would just simply go to the A to Z list and click on B for Bloom's Literature. That's where we're going to go next. So if you want to continue to build on this as you're building a lesson, all you need to do is go into Bloom's Literature where you're going to find, uh, if you browse here, you're going to find information about authors and their works, essay topics, literary themes, uh, videos, etc. And you will also find a Shakespeare Center here on the right uh, that we'll take a peek at before we leave this resource. Uh, for those of you that are teaching maybe in social studies and uh, uh, other content areas, there are also some good timelines available and some uh, good information on literary movements that actually tie into different issues such as uh, civil rights movements, etc. So what you would want to do first is just go in and type in the title or the author um, of the book if the student wanted to, to be able to pull information for this. Notice I find reference materials coming from a Companion to George Orwell, how to write about George Orwell. Um, and here I'm going to be able to really get a good background information, background on Animal Farm, censorship history, etc. So that can kind of step me through this piece. If you are assigning your students in high school to go out and find secondary sources and criticism on a work, you can cl click on this tab after you've done your search there. Uh, George Orwell's Dystopia is there on Animal Farm. Um, you'll also find Animal Farm as an allegory. So if you're teaching that lesson and you're explaining what an allegory is. The other great feature of Bloom's Literature are the videos that you'll find here. Uh, these videos will introduce Animal Farm. They'll talk about different aspects of Animal Farm. They even break out the characters um, and how they are represent different metaphors within the book. Um, once you go into any of these videos, you're going to have um, access to be able to share the video out. And I'm waiting for this video to load here. But you are able to share the video uh, by emailing a link. You can email it to another teacher, to a student. Um, you can also do the share to piece where you can share it out to your Google Classroom. So we have a server issue, it looks like, at the moment. Um, but that, that at least you know that those are available to you there. We're also going to um, take a quick peek at the Shakespeare Center for those of you who will be teaching Hamlet or Othello or one of the plays or even his sonnets because the Shakespeare Center will enable students to actually search on Hamlet or search directly or just browse, but they're going to find uh, overviews and backgrounds of the characters, different aspects of difficult passages within the plays. Um, they're also going to be able to find critical essays there 
So this is another link and way to access those. And then finally, there are actually, um, and under our browse section here, there are full text literary classics, full text poems that are here. And within that Shakespeare Center, you're also going to be able to see additional information on Shakespeare there. So that's one way that you can actually get in and have a look at, at a database that's relevant for English. So for those of you who are in social studies, science, or other content areas, we're going to go out now to the Learn360 database. Learn360 is where you can um, locate additional uh, videos, audio, images, even handouts for your students. So if you're wanting to go in and locate videos related to George Orwell or Animal Farm to f sort of finish out this step through, you could go in and directly search there uh, on Animal Farm and Orwell. I will tell you that your search here will actually retrieve items by keywords. So sometimes you might get an oddball kind of result there. Uh, then you might need to filter more by subject or grade level, etc. But so we have who was George Orwell here, Animal Farm, and you can see, uh, hopefully uh, this one will load. Uh, but if you click on the title here, you're going to see that this is actually the segment of a video that's a full video. So you can either share this one segment if this is what you want to show in class, or you can actually go out to the full program and be able to share a link to the entire, all of these different segments in the program. There's also transcripts available here where you're able to kind of peruse it as a teacher and see if it's covering the content that you want the students to have. Uh, also, this transcript is downloadable. So if you want to have your students print out the transcript to refer to later or to just kind of get an overview themselves, uh, that is available as well. You're also going to find that you can link directly to Google Classroom with these. You can also find citations for uh, all of the videos here in Learn360. So if students are doing group work, etc., they're going to be able to um, easily find the source, source information there. And with many of the videos, you can download them directly as an MP4 file to your device. So you could show this uh, in an online class or in uh, a face-to-face -face classroom with a smart board, etc. So if you're in science or social studies and you want to go out and do a direct search, uh, you can do that just by jumping in here. If you're wanting to find um, perhaps science videos for the water cycle, you can do that here. And you would be able to, uh, again, follow that same format once you find videos that are relevant to you. It's best if you do use these filters at the top. At this point, you're able to, uh, if you're only interested in middle school level, or those that apply to middle school or high school, you can limit to those grade levels here so that you know they're uh, more age appropriate for those levels. And you can actually just start out by going, when you first click on Learn360 and you're at their homepage, you can just browse all the videos. So you can go to videos here. You can browse subjects. And you can see whatever topic, whatever content area you are with, mathematics, algebra, et cetera, here, sciences, biology, chemistry or science, uh, English, ELA, grammar, literature, et cetera, social studies. Even if you're a teacher who's teaching Spanish this year, um, you're going to be able to find some great Spanish learning videos. And again, all of those are going to follow the same pattern. Um, where uh, if you're interested in the math, for instance, calculus here, you can click on the subject and see all of the results and then limit uh, by your grade level. And you can actually also limit with other filters such as the copyright dates. If you 
only want those that uh, have been produced within the last five years, you can adjust those filters to really get down to the nitty gritty of uh, something that you're looking for there. You're also able to create your own profile up at the top. If you would like to have an account there, you would be able to then create your own playlist for, for future reference. So this is going to be valuable to you um, really no matter what content area you're, in which you teach. The printables that you see here are excellent resources as well. As you see, there are science diagrams that will come up as PDF files that you can print out or download and fact sheets and additional math activities. So the science diagrams here are going to formulate from different aspects of science. So if I click on genetics here as an example, um, you're going to find all of those. There are 18 um, handouts that you can use here. So if you're uh, teaching about genes and chromosomes or mutations, etc., you can just open that up and you would be able to then, um, as it loads, you would be able to see yet again the same format where you can save it to your Google Classroom, download it to your device. You can share it by email here and it will just send, um, send the link, the, the URL link, the record URL uh, to the teacher, the parent, or the colleague. And then you certainly have um, just the same option to print it out as well there on this piece. So Learn360 is a very robust um, resource for you there. If we go back to the printables, you'll see that the fact sheets are primarily uh, covering broad areas of U.S. history there, women's studies, multicultural studies, government, um, if you need a, a quick handout for the executive branch or the judicial branch, it's there. Um, even sports rules for some of you who may be coaches there. And then you're also going to find religion and health handouts as well. In our math activities related uh, to uh, the printable section, you have those broken out by subject as well. So Learn360 is a great way to pull additional uh, videos, printables, etc. For those of you who are teaching social studies, you're going to find that the maps and flags here are very robust because you're not getting just an outline or just the detailed, but you're getting the detailed country maps and flags here. And you can see these in the carousels. You're getting historical maps, so if you need a historical map of the Holocaust, for instance. Uh, you're also getting thematic maps that are based on um, economy or different um, demographics. And you can break those out here at the top as well. So you have your historical maps for U.S. and world history, and you have your thematic maps uh, for coal reserves, natural gas, inflation, etc that are useful for you. And then finally, the United States maps and flags um, that you see here. If we go into South Carolina, for instance, here, then the person that would be in um, social studies or geography would be able to utilize these, the cities in South Carolina, the flag of South Carolina, locator map, um, the elevation map, so there's a, a, a lot, lot that you can use. So if you look at these, you'll be able to also see that you can uh, go in as a math teacher if you know that uh, you're introducing a lesson on a particular aspect of uh, a topic within math, for instance. Uh, you're able to go out and search those uh, as well. So again, math, science, languages, history, uh, you'll have the same ability to use those filters for those. And then the STEM lessons is something else that I wanted to pull up for you here uh, as well um, uh, as an option. So if after we've typed in polynomials, any of the STEM lessons that go along with uh, the topic uh, would be available here. You could also just go out to the top here 
um, choose STEM lessons and browse, uh, browse all of them uh, if you choose to go uh, from that direction. Chemistry related lessons, physics lessons, math lessons, etc. cetera. Uh, that can be very useful and handy for you as well. So let's go back and take a step back at uh, look at the middle school pages there. Uh, let's see if I can get back out to our discus site pretty quickly here. If we go uh, to the middle school grade level here, you're going to be able to find this also on the A to Z list, but I just wanted to show you the World Almanac for Kids Intermediate because this is very useful as well when you're talking about science, math, social studies. So you can see here, this is more for grades six through nine, um, and you're able to uh, view these by topics. It's very easy for the middle schooler to locate information. The language arts people that might be doing an argumentative uh, writing, they can actually learn some uh, some very good ideas from take a stand here. If they're just getting started with argumentative writing and learning how to take a side, how to uh, develop an argument for or against a particular topic, this is great because this is uh, really um, topics that are interesting to the middle schooler as opposed to sanctuary cities or some of the more heavy duty kinds of issues that um, that would be uh, le be learning about maybe in high school or college. Notice whenever we do go uh, break out the topics here, there are a lot of great resources on physical science, the social studies, and geography here on this side. Uh, geography of the ocean, lakes, and rivers, for instance. Anytime you click on a topic, your articles are going to be found on the left-hand side, and your fun facts, videos, and games, and puzzles will be found on the right-hand side. So... Um, if you're wanting them to maybe do one of the games here about landforms uh, that's available, uh, they can do that on their remote devices. Um, you can also pull up a video here. So if you're wanting to show coral reefs uh, from the, the, the areas here, the different waters and such, you have that option too. And you'll also see you have the shareability here looks very much like your Learn360. In fact, it is the same vendor, Infobase. Uh, so it's going to be very easy transition for you to utilize this database as well. Notice on the uh, front end side here, you do have maps that are found here and science projects. So the students can access maps here and actually get the detailed maps of countries and of the states. As we mentioned before, the South Carolina uh, map, for instance. So if the student is studying a particular country or state and uh, they need to really get the detailed information on a map, the, the lakes, the rivers, the main cities, etc., they can do that on their end. But notice the teacher resources on the right. The teacher resources are going to give you uh, lesson plans related to all of these topics, science projects, and more printable handouts. But look at the outline maps here. So if the student studies the detailed map of South Carolina and you're wanting them to now take a map test, you can actually pull up uh, the South Carolina outline map and uh, put this into your uh, Google Classroom or have them, or actually download a PDF and um, and send this to them, post it into your LMS, for them to actually take the map test. So that's something that, that's really great about this resource is that teacher resource section. Also notice this, if you are teaching about, like we said before, the water cycle, the solar system, um, et cetera, there's gonna be lots of good uh, in in handouts and information here for you to be able to use. Plants play a role in the water cycle, the water cycle images, if you wanted to pull that up as you're teaching and demonstrate that or maybe assign students to locate these kinds of information. Notice too, uh, you can browse any of the subjects to get these. So if you just only want the geography uh, related search results, um, 
geographical piece of the water cycle. Um, if you're more interested in the life science section, um, there you can find those as well. Also in your teacher resources, you're going to find some great printables that go along with each topic. So if you are teaching math, for instance, and your students are struggling with ratios or you need them to get a little extra practice in, you can actually view all of these handouts. They're printable, also downloadable. So you could actually go through until uh, you see ratios here, maybe give them a few word problems to answer. This is the sheet that you would give them. and um, they would you would be able to download that to a device or save it as a PDF and and post it in your learning management system there for students to have the extra practice and again you're going to find those within um, each of the topics there so you have the geometry operations expressions so these are going to be more relevant for your sixth seventh and eighth graders there um, actually for that uh, your physical science related piece, if you want uh, them to have a, a completed diagram of tectonic plates, the complete the rock cycle. Uh, so these are a lot of good hands-on, interactive, very easily uh, utilized uh, printables that you can use as well as you're preparing lessons and assignments. So the last two sections we need to take a look at uh, that we wanted to cover today in this video is our smart search and our credo reference so we're just going to jump into credo reference here for a moment from our a to z list credo reference is excellent for middle and high school students because it's going to break out topics for them so whether they are in a math class and they're studying maybe the background and history of algebra um, or if they're trying to wrap their head around dna or the periodic table uh, this is a great place for them to start for that. Also, if you're introducing a lesson or a unit, um, you can utilize these resources as well. Um, if you, if we got back to the, uh, the animal farm book and we were talking about maybe some of the concepts like communism or something um, in the social studies side of the house um, that would uh, have them needing to break out uh, maybe a topic that they're not as familiar with. So if they just do a general search on communism here, you'll see that they'll always get a breakout on the right of a mind map tool that will break out key people, concepts within uh, topics for them to be able to wrap their head around it. So if uh, you're um, teaching on communism, you'll see there's an overview at the top. There are videos that are available, other images that are related to your search. If you want to pop right into another one of the concepts on the map, you can do that. And it's now going to show us anything in relation to Mao Zedong here, uh, the Communist Party of China, the Cultural Revolution. So if you wanted students to maybe do group work or each report out on a different aspect of a topic, this is a great way to break that out. All of the uh, resources are here on the left, all of the specialized reference books. Again, Credo Reference has over 900 titles in it uh, that, that cover a gamut of subjects. So if I go back out to the main page here, you're going to see these are broken out by sciences, biographies, humanities there. Um, and you can kind of click on or go into different sections on gun control, social inequality, minimum wage so some of the top topics there as well also um, you're going to be able to search by title so if you are only looking for books that have a particular keyword in the title you can do that also so if um, we're looking for uh, books uh, related to biology we want the word biology to be actually in the title of it and not just somewhere in the book uh, you can then see the titles that are available here to help the students um, and then they can browse the contents so they can actually go in and browse the table of contents if there's something specific that they're looking for uh, transport in the cell here energy in the cell they can go out to the direct chapter and the lesson to learn they can also search within the book so if they are looking for a particular um, concept or word uh, that that they're uh, trying to locate they can do that here as well so if we um, are looking at 
um, we'll just do cell here very broad topic but um, that's going to then search within the book uh, and every chapter that the word cell appears energy in the cell the cell is a unit structure etc that's going to give them information that they need so the last uh, couple of things we'll look at today are the smart search where they can do a, a search across several of our databases at one time and pull a variety of resources. Uh, we'll also take a quick look at our culture grams for the social studies side of the house. But if we were to go in and um, search on our water cycle here or maybe if you were in science you want to do robotics or another topic, you could, they would do a broad search within smart search and um, as that comes up you'll see that there are over a million results just like Google unlike Google however the student has a lot more control over their results so they can actually limit to the uh, last uh, few years there if they want to change um, the, the publication dates so if they want to do uh, only uh, 2000 to 2021 there on the left they can then limit some of their results there they can also go back and choose what they want to see so if you assign them an assignment where you've told them I want you to find specific aspects of different topics um, you can have that student then limit to just what you've assigned. If you said, I want a magazine article about water, water cycle, an academic journal, and an ebook, they could go through and pick those specific pieces. So um, for the ebooks here, we're going to go ahead and look at ebooks that are related here. And notice when we go into these ebooks, um, the, the, the student will actually get the full text of the book. Um, more than one student can use the book at the same time so that's a great uh, feature there with the EBSCO ebooks but you'll see they can uh, browse the title of a table of contents there on the left they can also search within the title just like we showed you in Credo reference so if they're looking for a particular aspect of something the drops in the cloud stick to bits of dust the heavy droplets fall from the cloud um, if they're looking at the glossary there, um, you'll also see uh, that piece. Um, and it looks like this is slow to load, but it actually will show each page of the book. And let's see. So you can see the title here for that book. Um, you can also see on the left, if we want to go to a specific section of the book here that is there. They can also search within the book like you can with the credos and notice they're also able to you're also able to save these to Google Drive at the top or uh, Google Classroom and you also have a permalink that you can link directly to this title again um, to share out as an assignment there as well students can uh, email pages or print pages from a book uh, there and if we go back out to the re resources here you can see there's some that are more advanced books uh, the storm warning books here the earth and the role of water book so those students are going to be able to utilize these ebooks uh, there if you're requiring that of them also if we go back a smidgen here we go back to um, our original search we can also um, change the limiters again. So if they found their ebook, they can actually go back and now find magazine articles or locate something else just by changing this and updating it uh, for them. So if you are um, in social studies or science and you're actually wanting any articles that you'll find from uh, the Science Reference Center, you can actually also select from the databases these are pulling from from the Discus platform. So if you wanted the water cycle videos uh, from Learn360 for instance, you could pull this alphabetically and look for those videos only. You could also go into the Science Reference Center directly here and be able to 
um, pull the results on the keywords of water cycle directly from the Science Reference Center. And from that point, you can actually limit to full text. You can limit uh, the, the, the subject, the publication there. So the students can continue to limit and sharpen their results there as well. Um, you can actually have a student, um, social studies student, if you're studying South Carolina, you can go there and actually search as a subject on South Carolina to gather information and resources. And if you want them to um, have an overview of South Carolina there and several different aspects and information from South Carolina, mapping the past, etc. They can also limit here on the side uh, to the particular database that they want. So if they're only interested in South Carolina from the History Reference Center, they can just limit to those and update. So now they're finding that material as well. So if we pull from this journal article here and the student opens that, they're going to be able to save that to their Google Drive. They're also going to be able, you'll be, you would be able to pull it into Google Classroom. Notice um, along the left hand side of your screen there, you will see the Google Classroom, the Google Drive, the email options, and you also have um, that uh, citation piece. So again, they need to be able to cite this journal article they would be able to go right here to in order to do that. So if we went on from South Carolina into our culture grams, as we mentioned at the beginning of the session, we could jump into culture grams now and move into um, both the world and the state information. So culture grams is going to give them entire reports on countries and uh, other pieces there. So you would be able to use the world edition for your countries and continents and your states edition uh, for individual states. So if you wanted to be able to pull South Carolina here and the student could find out a whole timeline of information uh, from that um, about the formation of South Carolina, uh, kind of how it got started there, they could also um, do a, a look at a lot of the history, the background, the people, some of the culture, even some of the comfort foods that are served at each state that people eat in the state. Um, and also fun facts and contacts are down here. You got famous people. And if you notice right on the beginning of that South Carolina piece, you also have, uh, again, options for different types of flags that are there. And the student can actually go in and pull the whole report. So they can print the entire report out that would include all of this information there as well. And if we go back out to the World Edition, you're going to find a lot more uh, resources here too. If we go into China here, you can see that there are reports for China, just like for the states, but also the famous people of the country, interviews with people of the country, photo uh, gallery, etc. Uh, they can also calculate and compare uh, two different countries. So if you want them to do that, they would be able to go in and compare country data um, just by selecting and choosing a, a graph or a table there. Uh, we'll just pick a table if they want to compare nation to nation in different key areas like population, economy, exports, how many males are literate. And then if you go and choose your countries here on the side, um, if you uh, want to compare, let's say Australia and Canada and Costa Rica, you could do that also. So that's how you can actually go in and compare the information 
from different countries. They can pull that up and then pull it right into an Excel file. So this is some uh, good digital literacy for students to be able to learn how to, to use, use this information as well. So that's the overview that we have for you today. Um, again, if you are interested in any additional uh, information, you can contact us here, the DISCUS team. We're in the Electronic Resources Department of the South Carolina State Library. You're welcome to contact us for more information, uh, but your very best first source would be that librarian or media specialist at your school who knows your local um, um, classes and teachers and would know you best as far as what you would be looking for. Thank you for joining us today.